All right, storytelling Ron here. I want to talk about hyperspace in Star Wars role-playing game. So there's not a lot of good rules on it in, as far as combat situation, like chase sequence, you know, a chase sequence. So I'll just tell you kind of quick what, what I, I think you should do or what I'm going to do. Uh, um, you could do where you can just do it in four to six rounds, you know, something like that. Where, But you got to you got to clear out the start. You can't have any TIE fighters around you or other ships or freighters that are making chase on you. They can't be within that, say, long to medium to short range. You have to clear them out. You know, before you can go into hyperspace, I, I believe. I think that that makes sense to me, and I've based visually on the cinematics, and then what what I you know kind of know, uh, read or whatever. Anyway, so you have to clear those out in order to go to hyperspace. Also, you have to clear out. You have to get it away from gravity wells, like the planet or a star, a really big star destroyer. So you have to be clear of them as well to do the hyperspace. You can do astrogation while you're not. I would say not in a planetary thing. Once you clear that, you can do ast you can start your astrogation, but you can have tie fighters around you while you're doing it. But you can't go up until they're cleared. So you could do four to six rounds. Like once you get out of the gravity well of a planet uh, or Star Destroyer, I guess. Uh, it, Star Destroyer is not, you know, obviously a planet or the Interdider, obviously, because it has a gravity well. Once you get clear of that, then you can start the process of astrogation, you know, you're, you know, doing your thing. And you can say four to six rounds. That's simple. Very simple. Just do that. You can do that and that you're done. That's the solution right there. The way I'm going to do it. Um, and it is, um, I'm going to do, you need eight successes if it's easy, you know, or 10, 10 or 12 or 14, depending on where they want to go. Uh, I mean, that's, I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to do it. So once they clear it, they got TIE fighters all around them. The, everyone's got to do their thing. The astrogator has to sit there and calculate this out. And, I, and if there are TIE fighters around, I'm going to do like a boost, a setback die too. Um, but they can have, you know, other factors, their, their own skills. They get, uh, so they can get out of there. He may say, we're just going to go to somewhere close by, you know, and just do eight. Uh, or we got to go over there, you know, save money and do the, go directly there to, you know, and do 12 or 14. And successes. So, you know, and, and it's cumulative. So each turn, you might get two successes, four, you know, four successes, and keep adding each turn as they're fighting off the TIE Fighters. You know, that kind of thing. And obviously there's going to be those, the, the if they fail, if he gets failures, that subtracts from the successes. Um, you know, and the, obviously if you get the, the, the advantages that will add to either the, you can add it to the, the other, the shooting guys or, or, or take the str strain. Cause I might do strain, uh, either on the, the astrogation guy, the guy doing the astrogation, whoever's doing it or the ship, you know, or the astrogation computer itself is taking strain. Cause he's like, trying to, you know, get, calculate and all that. So that's the way I'm, I'm going to do that. And if they get a despair, if he does a despair with a failure, then the, the, the astrogation thing blue screen of death and it reboots and he's got to use his computer to start it up again um if he just gets a spare without a failure then at the end of the when they get out of there he's going to get a critical like you know they come out of the hyperspace at the other end they escaped or whatever but they get a critical so that's how i'm going to do it uh for, you know and um and let me show you kind of like uh that's it i answered that that's how i'm gonna do it, hyperspace and, and based on what i've read and looked at other people's ideas and stuff but here, I just want to show you that now. I'm going to elaborate a little more on, on it. Here's um, this map I found on here. It's a really cool map. And it's pretty dense. And that's what every, we all want. I'm going to go to Tatooine just because that's where I'm at. Okay, so I'm also going to do this too. Is based on the difficulty. The difficulty factor, right? Is based on these routes. So if they're in Tatooine and they want to do one of these the smaller routes, I'm going to start off with two difficulty, three difficulty, You know, depending, depending on where they want to go. Uh, if they do the major, like the Corellian run, the major routes to the, you know, and then it's going to be one difficulty, two difficulty, you know, probably do a little one difficulty, two difficulty, you know, that kind of thing. And each each time they go into hyperspace, they cost you one fuel cell, okay? And then in the atmosphere, it's one fuel cell. And then I would say a day of playing is another fuel cell, depending on what they, how, how much they use the ship, if they use a the ship. Um, and that that's, and so a fuel cell, how much does a fuel cell cost? It's kind of arbitrary. So I would say 25 to 50 in the inner core, up to 250, maybe even 500 in the outer core, depending on if they're in a jungle. Really bad, really remote. Um, but if they're on Tatooine, 250, one, you know, 200, 250. And if they can, if they just want to recharge it, maybe it's only 150. But obviously they can make wheel and deal there, right? The prices can fluctuate based, you know. Now, and also, you know, you, price prices of things, you know, you got to remember in the, in the inner core, yeah, the fuel's cheap, but everything else is expensive. You know, so you got to play that kind of thing, and but keep it simple so you don't go crazy, they don't go crazy about money, but also that they do have to stress over fuel cells. Um, 
And also, it, I would do a thing where when they do their astrogation and you know get some um, threats, get some threat. I can't I'm the, the symbol threat. They um, uh, maybe that costs more fuel cells. It costs an extra fuel cell, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so that's kind of I guess it from a hyperspace. Just explaining, uh, explaining, you know, oh, you know, if they want to go way out here to Shola, you know, somewhere outside of the main routes, you know, I would add another challenge die maybe, you know. Um, because they got to calculate and they don't know what they're going through. And and remember that since the galaxy is constantly moving, all even every route is always changing. You know, um, you know, with asteroid fields or spaceships, even they got to go around the other ships um, during astrogation. So that's it. So the I'm going to do successes. You got to get so many successes depending on the, the distance, and um, and then of course even, and I'll keep it simple: eight, ten, or twelve, maybe fourteen if it's really weird. And then, then, of course, I'll just determine kind of vaguely, you know, the difficulty, you know, based on what, what the route is. And if they already know the route, or and if they get info on the route, you know, from someone else or from a droid or from a map, that'll, you know, reduce the difficulty, that kind of thing. Um, but again, if they're being chased, so the chase part of it is they got to clear the planet so they can be chased then. They can clear the gravity wells. They can be chased then. You got to fight off whatever. Uh, obviously, I'm sure they could outrun the Star Destroyer, but they, you know, but then they're gonna have the, the Tie Fighters to deal with, and it, and it could be releasing more each time. But I would say, you know, I, I wouldn't release them unless there's a despair or they kill the, the first four, just because the Empire, Empire is like, you know, cheap that way. Um, but once they clear it, that's when you start the astrogation thing and doing that, and you know, you know, as far as and as far as like ranges and distance and chases, I would just keep it really simple and just you know, guesstimate on their on, based on the speeds and. And all that. Um, I, I, I know there's a lot more that you know you, you can come up with, and I can come up with, but that's how I'm just explaining, and I'm explaining to you that that's how really how you got to do it. You as a, a GM got to come up with your own way. And if you're going to need a lot of graphs to do it, I would or charts, I would not. I would cut that down, take that out, because you don't want to have to keep pulling up charts. You want you want it to be comfortable in your noggin, so that when you play, you just do it, and it's fun. If you're going to have to pull up charts to look at it. You know, there's there's already so much else to look at chart wise. Um, keep it simple. Keep it, you know. Uh, and by besides those sort of hyper going into hyperspace on a chase are probably you know somewhat rare in a sense. Like they're, they're not that often that you'd have that kind of situation. But keep it simple so that you can just play it cinematically, but have some sense of rule, of a orderly uh, breakdown of how it goes. So again, you could just do four to six rounds. That you know take some base, and based on their role and the difficulty, or you could do what I'm gonna do, which is like eight. To 14, you know, 12, 14 success. You need those successes to finally get that um, to go. And you cannot punch your hyperspace until all ships, you know, within your medium, close to medium or long range, depending on the size of it, um, are not close to you. And then you can take off. Okay. So I hope this is sort of helpful. Um, you know, again, it is more uh, role playing and more cinematic and more what you feel is exciting. Um, for the players all right okay real quick if you're if you're you know from planet to, ex to getting out of the gravity well that's where you can role play you can role play this you know the the star destroyer checking in on the ship oh you know where's what is your credentials where are you going you know what i mean whatever i can't i'm kind of brain dead right now but um where you act out you know they're they're trying to determine who they are and if they can allow them to go or start the chase sequence so during that period before you start the actual hyperspace chase sequence the period from the planet going out, you know, that, that's where you can have this, the, 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 the enemy or the Star Destroyers doing their little movements to get closer or, you know, in a role playing sense, um, and you, you know, build up that tension. So that's a quick little thing to explain that. So I would I would use that for that, whatever the situation is. But, you know, maybe on the planet you did perfectly fine. Everyone totally negotiated and you're out, you know, so and then you get to the the. The, the area the non-gravity area and then you can just go but again if you failed and then or you messed up and you got a threat a despair in there and maybe the empire or the the mercenaries or the hut the huts know about you then, the, then during that period between the planet to the gravity you can kind of role play that out and and arbitrary you know but you want to get to that point where there's a, there the extra, excitement starts at the once you get out of the gravity and then they can do the roll and then the ships have arrived and they're in range and that kind of thing so you can kind of play it like, like that as well um, you just build up the tension, and then then you have that chase sequence um, out, uh, outside the gravity well of a planet or whatever. Okay, so another quick explanation.